guys welcome back to my channel so before we even get started if you're not here from instagram i just want to say go ahead and um check me out on instagram my tagline is right there kbiff crochet and i'm just going to show you all a few clips and videos um of these pants that we are going to make today so this video is definitely highly requested for these baby bell bottom pants that um i make <laughs> They're also on my website if you're not here to get the pattern, you just happen to click on this video. Here's another pair of pants that I made for one of my clients. And then, as you can see, I also made it into a jumpsuit even. Um, and that was something that somebody asked me to do. There's me. And just overall, if you want to, you know, ask me to do something, ask me to make something, I would suggest that you follow me on Instagram because that's generally the easiest fastest way to reach me so let's get started so i am starting off with a size j crochet hook and some plain red heart yellow yarn i am going to do a slip knot and i don't know how many i'm gonna chain right now this is for size eight and um, it's 5.30 in the morning. I'm really tired. So I'll let you guys know. But again, you guys already know how I like to do things. Um, I'll put a chart in this video like I did in the last video. To let you all know um, the pant size and how many inches you should do. But I'm, I'm really not into babying you along your entire pattern because if that's the case i might as well just make it for you sorry if that's too blunt sorry if that makes you feel like i'm not you know helpful but help yourself <laughs> this is what i googled and i will insert it in um like for you to look at it on your own but for me she wants a size 8 so I'm gonna go in um, at 27 inches and eventually try to increase a little tiny bit because these pants will stretch a little tiny bit um, to 37 inches but yeah just to show you all that I I don't like counting I've said that in just about every video so I have my tape measure out and I'm just going to um, take the chain, it is crossed over, that I did use. And I'm just going to lay it flat. And this already looks too big to me for a size. Um, it already looks too big to me for a size 6 or a size 8, but I'm just going to see how much... Um, I need to go and then if you do fold it, it makes it easier for me because I don't have to keep depending on how long your tape measure is I don't have to keep um, moving it but if you do fold it remember that you need to multiply you need to be good at math child just just think back to your math class so I'm going to start at the beginning with my tape measure um, and then see if I can get to about what did I say 20 27 so if I could get to like 13 14 inches so right here this would be 28 all around and that would be for a size 6 as you can see it does stretch so I feel confident that I can take out um, this amount of chains and I'll be where I need to be to start um, going around with the actual pants okay so I have my I have my really really long chain and I'm going to make a large circle by connecting the front to the end and you do want to make sure that your yarn is not twisted so you just want to guide it along your finger and make sure that there are no twists 
Um, there are no twists in the chain because then it won't look right. I'm going to go into the first chain um, and do a quick little slip stitch. And now I'm just going to double crochet all the way around. Um, again, for high waist, it's, it's, well, I'll give you guys a general number. How about that? So I won't count these chains because, like I told you, I just use inches. Um, and I don't know how many chains it is. I use my tape measure and I, I have about 28 inches here. That's what my tape measure told me, 14 on each side. Now I'm just going to um, double crochet all the way around and I will let you guys know how many rows I do. Um, and I won't be talking through this whole video as well. I just wanted to give you guys a basis because um, a lot of you guys say that you don't have enough guidance or numbers but I really think again that if you're not trying um, so basically I'm going to double um, double crochet all the way around until I get down to the part where it's time to separate the pants and, and go their separate ways and then I'm just going to go in on each side of the pants and continue down and decrease a little tiny bit then once I get all the way down the pants to create the ruffle, I'm just going to go into each separate double crochet loop with multiple double crochets. And that will make a ruffle. It's really not simple as long as you can do a double crochet and you know the, um, the way that you want the pants to look and you know how to decrease, how to increase. These, these are really, really simple. All right, so we have made it all the way down to where we're going to start to separate the um, the two different pants leg parts. So because I don't do numbers, I honestly don't know how many I'm going to um, skip. But I'm just going to go straight into the middle. So as long as you get, you know, at least within five stitches, um of the middle you should be fine there won't really be a huge difference in the pants leg sizes um but try to get as as even to the middle as you can and if numbers is your type of deal then i would suggest that you go back and count how many um you did and then divide that by two and then go in the middle that way but now i'm just going to continue around that one pants leg on the left and then I'll get all the way down, of course, to the bottom of the pants, this side, and then I'll have to go in on the other side. And again, we are using double crochet. So now that I've gone around one row, I'm just going to um, continue with the double crochet and make sure that I don't leave any space here. Typically in the middle, um, the two pieces tend to want to separate for whatever reason and it leaves a hole in the inside of the thigh. Granted, nobody would typically ever see that, but if you see that space there, which is bigger than the previous spaces, you just want to um, make sure that you tighten that up so the holes are not bigger than they already are or should be. So make sure your double crochet stitches are tight and we want to continue around all the way around with our double crochets to form the pants leg part. And I will say that you guys might want to skip a chain in every third or fourth round that you go around uh, for the pants leg. And that'll make these pants, you know, they'll it'll give it, sorry, the skinny type of look instead of just going around with the same type. Uh, the same amount of double crochet sorry so as you can see here I have a tad bit of decrease but not a whole lot it all depends on the look that you're going for if you're looking for the really, the really skinny look that'll tighten all the way down to your ankle then you need to be doing some type of decrease so I did create a belt loop for this or a belt and I'm going to insert it um, by just snaking the pants all the way around and when I say snaking I mean going in and coming out going in and coming out with my crochet hook 
and pulling that yarn all the way around and that will give us the belt that we are looking for and I really don't think I don't recommend that you send these pants out or wear them without about a belt oh my god I can't talk since these pants do stretch um, I just think it accentuates the waist a little bit more and um, it gives you a much better look than wearing it just plain and to create the belt loop I literally just did a slip knot and I want to say I chained more than a hundred of course maybe like 150 and here comes the part where I did run out of yarn so I generally like to tie the two the two the part from the old piece of yarn and apart from the new piece of yarn so the two strings I generally tie those two together and just go on with my business but for this I'm going to start off with a slip knot with the new skein of yarn and I'm going to connect it to the pants using the old slip knot, which my hook is on. I'm going to bring the new slip knot through the old chain or the old slip knot that my pants is connected to. And then I'm going to tighten the old piece of yarn around the new piece of yarn. So I'll slow down so you guys can see. So I'm just going to tighten that old string that will have a tail in. And I'm going to continue along with the new slip knot or the new string. And I'm also going to weave all of those pieces in as I continue along my work. If you didn't get it the first time, I hope that you go back and watch it instead of telling me how much I suck at crochet. <laughs> Alright, and now for the fun part of making the ruffles. Once you get down far enough um, on the pants as far as you would like to go, you just need to go into each double crochet loop or stitch and double crochet three times into that same loop, or at least that's what I did. If you want a more dramatic ruffle, of course, you could go in four or five times. I'm always interested to see what you all come up with. If you only want a slight ruffle, I would say you could overwhelm the double crochet stitch maybe two times and continue around um, with it like that. So for everyone who would say that they still did not understand, we used our inches chart at the top and we decided how many um, chains we needed to do based on the amount of inches. Then we connected the loop. And we did a double crochet all the way around. Again, I will enter how many rows I did all the way down. Once we got down, we connected the front to the back to create the separation between the right leg and the left leg. Once we had that, we went in with our slip knot on um, either side. And then we did a double crochet all the way down. I will enter how many chains. I mean how many rows I did once again and if you would like to decrease um, I would recommend decreasing in one every every third or fourth so you do one row two rows three rows then you decrease in this row and I showed you all how to decrease um, and to do so you can just simply skip a loop and double crochet into the next loop that's the easiest way to do it um, and that will create the you know the skinny leg um, that will be tight down towards your calf then once you do as many rows as you want to do and you get down to the part where you want to make the ruffle you simply go into each chain at the top I didn't go into each chain at the bottom but you go into each chain with more than one double crochet and this will simply make the ruffle um, just overwhelm the, the chain with more double crochets than it can handle which will cause it to bunch up um, so I did that I did three 
like I showed you in each double crochet here and then I think I did one double crochet two double crochet one double crochet in the next row and then I did one double crochet in each row after that for a total of about six or seven rows and that created these ruffles here so this is what I came up with like I said this is really really simple as long as you know how to double crochet and you um, follow directions and are not scared to make mistakes and are willing to try. That is the most important thing. So, yeah. Five things that I've learned since being celibate for a year. And I also want to say that I was so scared to like put videos out like this. Um, just because, like I said, 